Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make this cute double pocket card. And I was inspired by these seed packets from the local dollar store. I thought they were so pretty, but I don't have a very green thumb. So I thought they'd be really cute to put in a card and mail off to somebody who does have a green thumb. And they're really fun and easy to make. This video is brought to you by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. I'm gonna be using a sentiment from this stamp set here called Mom and Dad. And I'm also gonna be using a couple peg stamps sets. I've got Poppies for Remembrance and Poppy Wreath and uh, your basic stamping supplies. So the first thing we're going to do is make the base for our double pocket card. You can see you end up with two little pockets and you could actually make a third if you wanted to but um, the back one would be kind of flimsy and I'm actually going to seal it shut on the next one to make a little more sturdy of a card but you can arrange your things in your pockets however you like. And you're basically going to need an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. And what you're going to do is fold it in half one way. And I just use double sided cardstock because you can see both sides. So it's a really great way to use that precious sheet of paper that you've been hoarding. And I'm going to fold it the other way. And this is basically just going to give me marks on the paper. I might need to fold it back in the opposite direction. Uh, so, you know, using something that's a nice heavyweight pattern paper, but nothing like super duper thick. If you're going to use like a thick cardstock, I would score it on a scoring tool first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut um, from the edge into the center on one of your lines. And it might be a little difficult to see. I always notice on one side of the paper, it's usually a little easier for me to see. I'll just fold it here and I think you'll be able to see it. You could use a paper trimmer for this if you want. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this piece back like this and just crease it with your finger. You can use a bone folder if you want to. And then um, I'm not really using my measuring thing as a measurer, but I'm just going to bring this in. Let's see, my fold is there about an inch from that fold line or so. And don't worry if it's not perfect. It does not have to be perfect. And so then... What you're going to do is fold it up like this. We're going to fold this piece over inward, and that's going to make our back pocket. I'm going to fold this piece up, but what I like to do is actually, instead of tucking that back in, if I have double-sided paper, I like to bring it over so that I have that contrasting paper showing. And then you're going to fold this around like that, and that makes your pockets. So what I want to do here to make it a little more sturdy is I'm going to want to adhere that down. But before I do that, I want to give this a pretty edge. And I'm going to do that by using a paper punch. And um, you can use, and you can even use decorative edge scissors, whatever you have to give it a pretty little border. This is an older one by Stampin' Up! And I thought it was so pretty. I've used it a lot because it's such a classic design. And I'll be using scalloped edge elements throughout this um, project here. Now you can see it doesn't quite make it to where I have folded. Here I've got just a little bit of extra space. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna try to punch another, another um, bump. I'm just gonna freehand cut it. You're not gonna notice it once we, uh, once we glue it down. So there, so let's fold this back up the way we had it and have a look, oops. I'm going to just kind of give that a little crease there. We wanted to fold over a little weird on me. Well, it still does, but I think I folded it a little too far. Well, you know what? I'm just going to trim that. So what, what happened was I folded this over just a little bit, and it folded over my flap there, so I'm just going to snip in like that. So that way I don't have this like um, bump on the edge that's going to catch on an envelope or anything. So I just made like a little divot in there. You can't even really see it, but I thought I'd mention it since you might run into that issue as well. And there, it's going to be a lot neater. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to adhere this down to the back of my card with some double-sided tape. So now after that's glued down, this back piece becomes one and it looks like this, which you can see the pockets are made, but they're open on the edges. So we want to make sure that we close those down. And you can do it with a stapler, you could do it with double-sided tape, or you could sew, um, whatever aesthetic you like. But I think eyelets are really pretty, so or brad, so if you have um, any of those products, it'll work great. Just make sure that whatever you're going to put on the inside here, your widest thing, just make sure it's going to be able to fit. 
if you put eyelets in. I can get eyelets in and this is just going to fit, so just keep that in mind. You don't want to go in too far or it's going to block where your, um, where your items can go. So I'm using this little tool here. It's called a crocodile. And what my key for um, spacing stuff out is I'll do both ends and then I'll go right in the middle and then I'll go in between those two and that will give me pretty evenly spaced out holes. I'm a little close to the edge on that one but I really don't think it's going to matter too much. I mean this is handmade. It's supposed to look handmade. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use the kind of eyelet setter that you pound in with a hammer. They're very inexpensive, but they're also quite loud and you have to have a space where you can pound them. So I haven't used one of those in a while. I actually um, tried one earlier today to see if I could still remember how to use them. And, uh, and it's pretty easy to use, but oh gosh, they're so loud. So you can see how close that one is to the edge. That one's, um, I wouldn't go that close to the edge. I think there's a chance you might rip, rip it through the edge when you're when you're attaching it. Then over here on this side, I'm just gonna do a couple, I'm just gonna do like three actually, right here on the edge, as close to the edge. Oh, you know the other thing about these, um, these crocodiles is there's actually a little gauge that you can set, why don't we do that? So if you've never noticed that before, there's a little gauge on the side of your punch and you can figure out how deep you want that to punch in Let's just have it just over the edge there. And then you tighten down this little nut and that will keep that from moving. That's what I have at about a quarter of an inch. And that would measure, in, I believe, from the center point of the whole knot, like it's not a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'll just do two, I'll do three here. You just have to be careful because it's really easy to push, especially on an older one like I have. Um, now look how nice and e even those are. Can you see there? Let me put it against the against the backing versus those because I use that little guide so oh, you forget about different things after a while and then we're just gonna adhere these in using the squisher part of the tool and there we have our pockets so we got one two pockets there hopefully this still fits yes it does perfect Okay, so now we can do our stamping, now that we've got this all situated. And I've got a couple items to stamp on. I've just cut out a tag, and I've punched out a circle from some cream cardstock, and nothing special, just the stuff you can get at the um, office supply store. Whatever you have on hand is fine, as long as it's smooth for stamping. I'm going to fold this in half. Now you can score it with a scoring tool if you want, but this is, um, is going to be fine. I'll use my bone folder just to smooth it down really well and I'll look at I'll just stamp on whatever side looks the smoothest. And I also have a little tag topper for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down so I'll know exactly where I want my stamping to go. So um, if I don't put this down first, I might end up stamping where this is gonna end up. And you could also use just um, an office supply store tag if you have some of those hanging around. It'd be about the same color, honestly, so. And I'm just trying to not to get glue on my gray mat. I love this gray mat for um, uh, for working. The only downside is that it stains, so I have to be careful not to get glue or or um, or stuff on it. Um, but it's it's very nice to work on a mat like this because of the color. It's very it reduces eye strain a lot having something that's gray. Okay, and I've got my inks here. I'm using um, Angel Pink, Lilac Posies, Elderberry, so we've got three different shades of pinky purples, and I've got bamboo leaves. And the stamps I'm using are those poppy stamps I mentioned earlier. I'm going to stamp on this first, this little tab, and this is just basically because I want the, um, I just want to cover up the price on here, and... I think it will just add a nice little, um, nice little aspect. I'm going to start with this big poppy here. I'm going to ink it up in lilac posies, which is more of like a kind of like a fuchsia color. And I'm going to rim the edges with this darker color and I'm going to stamp it right in the middle pretty much. And then I'm going to use this pretty little uh, flourish. It's, it looks almost like a lupin. It's just like a little sprig of berries. And look here, what I did was, um, I can show you. When you have a big round stamp like this and the image covers most of the peg, you can leave it as is. But when you have a stamp that's kind of skinny and doesn't cover the whole peg, peg, it's nice to trim off the excess so you don't end up getting a circle, like if you wiggle your stamp when you stamp. So it just kind of gives you a, 
um, a little bit of a a little bit of a better chance of not messing it up, I guess. And I'm going to put in a little little poppy leaf here. And I'm going to put one over here. And now I'm going to put a couple more flowers. I'm going to use this one. Um, and I'm going to use that with the darker purple. Right there. And I really like that. I think I'll do another one with that dark purple right over here. There we go. Oh, I'm glad I didn't get ink on that. Okay, so now that I'm just going to set aside to dry for a moment. And now we're going to stamp on the tag here. And I am going to use a few of these poppies. I think I'm going to start off with this one here. It's my largest one. Hopefully it focused. I'm going to get the lightest ink and then I'm going to uh, rock the bottom of the flower in the next color. Do that again. And maybe just do one light one over here. You want to have a good variety as you're going because that's just going to make it a little more interesting. So for this one, I'm going to go in that medium color and then rock it in the darker one. And maybe we'll turn that one over to the side a little bit. And this one, I think I'll just do this one with a darker color. Oops, I did that in green. We'll pretend that's a leaf. Let me clean this stamp off. Put that there, we'll put one there. And uh, we'll call that good, I think. Maybe one more. I'll do one more of this brighter pink. Um, there. Okay, so now we're going to take a marker, and I've got my Memento marker and bamboo leaves. It's the same color as that. Um, and you know, I'm thinking maybe I'll stamp a couple of these poppy leaves in green because I've got that wayward... Um, I'm going to try to make that look like it's a leaf. <laughs> we'll put a couple of those on the edge there just to give it... You know, you repeat something, it becomes a design element. You don't want it's a mistake. So you just want to make it match. And I'm just putting some stems from my poppies here, but I'm only bringing them to the edge so that I'll have room to write. There, I think, oh, this one doesn't have a stem. And there we go. And that looks enough like a leaf now that I have a uh, that I have stamped the other leaves and I think. So that can have a little ribbon on it. I'm gonna go ahead and cap these inks off before I set something in them. And I'm gonna put a little ribbon right through the top there. I think I'll just tie that right on there. And I like something like this because it can be used as a bookmark, the seeds can be planted, and then the card can essentially be reused because you would do your writing on the tag. Now there is a stamp set from Rubber Stamp Tapestry that's designed to encourage people to reuse the um, uh, to reuse these cards, and I'm just going to grab that and show that to you because I think it would be great to stamp that on the back. Okay, so there's a bunch of different sentiments in here, and I think this one would be really neat. To, uh, to stamp on the back, it says, I was lovingly made before you throw me away. You have my permission to regift me or tear me apart and reuse me to create something new. And uh, I just think that's a really great sentiment because that way nobody has to feel like they have to keep something forever. Um, and it's so hard to get rid of something that somebody made. And that way it can get reused and it can brighten somebody else's day. And nobody has to feel bad about, you know, reusing it. So I'm going to use that same purple that I used, that same darker one. Stamp that right there. I know when I'm not sure, actually this is a great rule of thumb, anytime you're stamping something, I uh, give it time for the ink to transfer from the stamp to the tag. I usually put a squishy mat underneath when I'm stamping, but I didn't really think about that before I pushed it down, but I did get a really nice impression, so that was lucky. And I'm going to put that little recycling arrow on there, too. I 
always think it's odd that I spend time, I actually make a card ahead of time before I do a live narrated video and I still end up changing my mind or making mistakes. And I'll put the little arrow on there just so, the recycling arrows, just so it's really um, obvious and so people know that yes, it's okay to do that. And we can tuck that in the back pocket here. And on this, I'm just gonna put some Matisse. I think that's just so pretty. I love mixing and matching my peg stamps because they all go so well together. And you have so many more options when you mix your sets together. I let mine all live in a big crate and I have them standing up on their end so I can see the index. And I could go, ooh, I think I'll, well, they don't wanna cover up the name Lavender because I want people to know what it is. And that can go in there, or vice versa. You can swap those around. Ooh, that might be pretty, actually, because then you get to see more of the stamping. Put that in the back. Put that in the front. That's kind of pretty. You can do it however you want. It's up to you. And I thought we'd also do, like, a pretty little book plate on the bottom. And there is a really nice uh, sentiment here. It says, you are amazing. And we're going to use that same dark purple ink again. And the reason I'm using the dark purple instead of black is because it's going to match. And this color is dark enough that it stands out and it's nice and crisp. I'll stamp that there. And I just um, tend to save the little, like, strips of paper when I am creating like I always have little paper strips next to my die cutter and I just save those because they come so handy for this or you can just cut off a sliver when you are cutting your other elements because there's, there's always gonna be a little strip of paper next to something like when I was cutting that tag out you know there's always a little sliver of paper that you're probably not going to use for anything else and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that where I want this to be because it's a little bit easier to do it this way Stick that down where I want it. I think I'll center it up this time. And then I'll put the book plate on top. And I'll add my ribbon. I'm just going to tie it to each to each end here. Do a double knot so it's not going to wiggle free. These are fun. These could totally be taken apart and used in the scrapbook. Um, I love embellishments like this because they really will last. And then I'll wrap it around. And I don't cut it until I get a good idea of how much I'm going to need. And that way I don't end up wasting my ribbon. And I can dye this ribbon. This is um, rayon seam binding. So if you color it with your reinkers, your spray inks, whatever you have, and then you crinkle it up and let it dry, you get this beautiful texture. And it's very inexpensive. You buy spools of the white and you dye it whatever color you want. And if you have colors of like, say, like spray inks or um, stamp pad ink or whatever that you use a lot, you can make up those ribbons to match your most often used colors. And it's, it's gorgeous. So now I'm just gonna pull it tight and then slide it off so I can tie it where uh, where I need it to be tied. Um, and that way the ends will still retain that crinkliness, but the, the back of it's gonna be pulled pretty tight so it shouldn't slide off. I will tack it down with a little bit of glue because um, I don't want it to come like come out in the envelope or you know get get lost on display or anything. And plus you want to tack it down with a little bit of glue just because otherwise it might not land right over your um, your sentiment and you can use whatever you want because it doesn't have to be super strong as long as you get a little like a little dab under the ribbon knot that's really going to hold it pretty well I'm just using some matte Mod Podge that I refilled this glue bottle with because I really like the applicator tip I find with a lot of the fine tip applicators nowadays is that they're so fine that they clog on me and I can't um, I can't unclog them and I end up wasting half of the bottle and then I just take a jar and set it on there this is just an old votive that I cleaned and then I actually keep my glue bottle in there when I'm working with a cap off so I can quickly retrieve my glue now here's a little doily that I die cut I'm just gonna glue that down while I'm at it oops I got a little glue booger on there
And I like the matte Mod Podge because it, uh, if it, if the glue does seep underneath, you don't get a snail trail. It doesn't doesn't give you an ugly shiny spot. You won't even see that it's there, and it flows really well out of uh, these bottles. So that works for me. I've got, I've gotten the fine tip applicators before, but I find that after a while, um, like by the empty ones, you can refill. After a while, they just um, they just clog, and I've had this bottle for probably years. I do like the glue. I like the Tombow glue quite a bit, too. So buy that, enjoy it, and then just refill it with whatever you prefer. Um, and that pretty much does it. I was just looking at my other card to make sure I didn't forget anything important. But yeah, I think I got everything on there. And um, I'm just going to, well, I'll just give you a peek here. I'm going to go set this back on top just to hold it while it dries. You can add more embellishments if you want. You can swap what's in which pocket. If you prefer it the other way around, I can show you that, because that's not going to hurt anything. But you've got all this area to write. Uh, you could write on the back as well. This could be saved as a bookmark. And still, even without that, you've got a cute little tag that somebody could put trinkets in, or put a note, or, you know, a gift card, because you could put a gift card in the front, you could put a note in the back. So it's wonderful for reusing as well, because you don't have to actually write on the card. And this will fit in your standard A2 envelope, which is four and a for a four and a quarter by five and a half card. So there is this one. Use up that double-sided paper. It works so well with this project because you get to enjoy both sides of it. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And until next time, happy crafting.